Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm showing you a pen that is big and different. So if you usually like the videos I make, I ask you please to subscribe my channel and also to put the like in the video. So today I have this pen. This pen is very very big and it is an interesting one that I'm lucky to have and to be able to review. So, this pen is the William Shakur Titan and it is Titan because it is a very big pen, I think that part is obvious and the name William Shakur is the name of the person in the UK that makes this pen. This pen is 3D printed, so we are not talking about any fancy material. It's just plastic that is 3D printing. You can see some other uh, reviews online about this pen, some other videos. There are other YouTubers that have some. Uh, the first time I saw this pen was in the SBRE Brown uh, YouTube channel. He made the review of this pen and I really think that this pen is a very interesting one. There are in other videos other pens with different materials and I have to say that you will get the best of this pen if you get a translucent material and a faceted pen because of the depth of it but I didn't go that way. So first let's take let's take a look at the parts of the pen. You have this cap that is very simple. It's like a, a dome there, nothing on it, no engravings, nothing. Then you have the barrel that has three ink windows here and then on the opposite side three more ink windows and then you see here there is the seam. I cannot turn it because the pen is full of ink but this is a piston filler pen. So this is the outside. Then you uncap the pen and let me show you the turns. So I think a quarter of a turn to uncap it and you have a quite large section and the threads of the pen are not between the barrel and the section they are uh, between in the section but between the the place where you grip the pen to the nib so this is an interesting one the nib features a, a nevonite feed and in the other side you will see a titanium, very beautiful titanium nib. Um, this nib is made by Bock and it is a number 8 nib. So it's quite nice because it is a large nib and I am one of those people that like big nibs, although I like also pens with small nibs, but I really enjoy this. So, let's see some other details. The pen is very well made, as I showed you. It has this uh, very good nib and you have here the ink windows. And because this kind of plastic, because of the texture, you know this is applied layer by layer, uh, overlapping the layers, so there is some texture, it is polished on the outside, but the ink could get stuck into the pen, so it has an inner sleeve, like imagine a transparent, I could have done this without ink, but I've been, I having, I'm having this pen inked all the time since I got it, uh, so imagine uh, like a transparent tube inside that is attached to the section in one side, in one end, and in the other end it is where the piston goes in and out. So 
it's like it has an inner barrel inside this one, a transparent one. So you see the ink window is not really a transparent part of this barrel. It, the barrel is the outer case of a real uh, tube that is transparent and allows for these very deep ink, in, ink windows. So, you can, if you see it, close it closely, you can see the lines of the, the way the 3D printing machine, the 3D printer, uh, lays the layers on top of each other. So, it has some texture and as I told you, if you go for a faceted pen with uh, facets, of course, and with that texture and if it is translucent and polished, you will see a lot of details and um, texture to it and I think it's beautiful. There, is, there are some dark green material made like that it is amazing and it looks much better than this pen, I have to say. They look much more expensive, much more classy. I would say that one is the pen you should go for. The problem is uh, I love yellow pen, so I saw, I saw the other ones I was trying to see if there was a, a nice, a closer color to, to to yellow, there was an orange, and I was almost there, and then William told me, I have this one, and I went for it immediately. Yes, I want a big yellow pen. Does it make sense to have such a vibrant colored pen, so excessive, if you can have a much more classy pen? Yes, it does. I don't regret one bit to have bought this one. I'm only sorry I couldn't afford to buy two pens because I would buy this one and also a faceted green because they are beautiful. But if I have to choose, I will go always for this one. So, I'm, I'm telling you about how I got the pen. I bought this pen from William and how can you buy the pen? You have to go to his Instagram account, I will leave the link on the description uh, below and you go there, you send him a message and you start working with him because you can choose different colors for the pen, different shapes, there are two sizes for this pen, one bigger piston filler, a smaller that is a cartridge converter pen, and you can have uh, maybe to match different colors on some of the parts. So it can be one color is another, another, and another. So you have some uh, freedom to make choices. And you also can choose if it, the pen is faceted or smooth, if it is polished or if it is rough right from the printer. And you can even choose the number of ink windows and the shape of them. I just went for the shape, the biggest pen he had, the regular shape with regular uh, ink windows like his design but with my color and I'm happy. He also sent me this, which is a nice 3D printed pen rest and I think it's great to have a pen rest, but it's not usually included with the pen. About the price, this pen costs a little over 200, uh, 200 uh, pounds. Is this worth it? For the material of the pen, I would say maybe not. But for the characteristics of the pen, I would say yes, because it is 3D printed, it is unique, it is made to your specifications, so you can customize the pen as I told you. You can choose the nib, the, the, nib, the nib size, and for a number 6 nib, you can have a titanium nib, which is a flexi, and the pen is so well made, I think it really worth the, the money. Now, some other details. The capping, I think it's nice and secure. It stays secure there. 
it, it has no problem with it. This pen is not meant to be posted. You, it's like that, but if you do this, it doesn't post at all, so forget about it. And it is nice. If you like big pens, this is good. This is quite light, so you will not have your hands um, tired of holding this pen. It really works well, so I think this is a very good choice if you like big pens, and I think this is the kind of pen you would like to write a lot at home. Maybe not so much to take out of home. And why not? Because this pen will not fit most pen cases. It is hard to find a case where this will fit. I searched at home and I had one. This one that got that came with a, a pilot pen from Japan and this pen case is great because it it's almost made for this specific pen and I like it. Another detail that I want oops that I want to tell you about this pen. This is another downside of this pen. I have I think this pen has to biggest problems. One is the size. It's not easy to carry around. The other one is because of the size and the size of the nib, it is hard to put into the ink bottle and fill it. You have to have a very deep and full uh, ink bottle to be able to fill this pen. And that's not so great. But that's what happens when you have a big pen. Uh, there is, there would be a possible answer to the problem, which would be a, a traveling inkwell like the Visconti or Pin either. But the question is, this pen doesn't fit on the mouth of those traveling inkwells, so you cannot easily fill it from any ink ink. Uh, ink bottle you may have around, you have to choose a big one that allows the, the depth of liquid to, to fill. I'm currently using a Pelican Edelstein bottle and it works, but I think maybe the Ackerman uh, bottles will, will be great for this pen. And so, I think I told everything I wanted about the pen. Let's just see the size and then the writing sample and this video is getting long. So, first I want to show you the size comparison. And let's start for the usual comparison I make. I usually compare these pens with a Lamy Safari, a yellow one, see the size, and a Parker Centennial to fold. This is the Citrine check, a very beautiful and You can see this, this pen is huge. When you uncap the pen, you cannot compare this nib with the size of the Lamy. And it is even bigger than the nib on the Parker, as it would be uh, easy to understand. When you think of, a na of other big pens, we have to think about the Moonblanc 149, that is also a small pen compared to this one, but the nib is roughly the same size. And let's just put it close to be quicker. Let's see the size compared with the... This is the Penteo Bonita Oversize black, which is big, but not as big, and two pens that I received recently. One is the Benu Euphoria, which is a quite big pen. It's long, but not as big as the, as the William Shakur, and the Leonardo Ficina Italiana Momento Zero Grande Sand, which is an amazing finish, big pen, but nothing compared with William Shakur. So this is really a monster, but a comfortable one to use. Now let's see how it behaves on paper. And here we have pen and paper and let's start. So this is the first, the grip is perfect, there's no step there, it's very comfortable to hold, no problem. So this is the William 
Shakur, Titan, Yellow, with a fine titanium nib. And the paper is Rhodia.pad, and the ink is the Pelican Edelstein. Um, Smoky Quartz, a nice dark brown ink. And so you can see that it has a fine line and we can say that the line is really fine and this is very nice. I like fine nibs so this is kind of perfect. The ink flow is very good but I will go back, no, let's see. The ink flow is quite good. Pelican Edelstein is, I would say, a dry ink and this is wet enough. Not too wet, but wet enough. This is the normal writing. When we go to the reverse writing, it performs well. I am one of those persons that, or one of those people that like the Bok nibs and I think when they are well tuned, they are really good nibs and I like this, so it comes from fine to an extra fine when you write in reverse and about line variation. Ah, that's a good thing. Let's see. Reverse. Regular. And now applying some force. And why does this happen? Because the titanium allows for some flex and you don't have to press hard and you can spring the clip if you force it too much because titanium is soft but it will be useless if you, if you do it too too strongly, but you can have lots of line variation, and this is so nice, just for making some doodles. But if you're like me, you will not have lots of pleasure doing this. It is fun just to watch and to do some things when I'm, I'm just wasting time. It's nice for that, but I cannot really do any calligraphy work. So. It's nice to have a pen that allows for normal writing, despite allowing for also a flex writing. And I think this is great. You can write with it as if it was a regular pen. You can see some bounce to it, but you can also take some flex out of it, which is also nice. So you can use it the way it works better best for you. The, I was talking about the wetness. If you do like this, it will have much more ink, but not terribly wet. But in some inks, oops, I hit the camera, you will see there, it starts to feather even in Rhodia paper, because there is too much ink in one spot. So, I hope you liked this video. I have to thank you for watching this video. This pen is too fun and if you like big pens and if you enjoyed this video, contact Mr. William Shakur. The process of creating your pen is very fun. There's lots of communication. He sends you pictures back to you to show you how things are going and I think it's really a nice experience. It's something completely different. They are not the cheapest pens ever, but for a piston filler with titanium nib and kind of a unique uh, color combination and uh, unique pen, I think 200 pounds is not that expensive. So, I hope you liked it and I hope to see you next time. Bye.